begin with breaking news coming out of Nigeria. In a surprise move, the Monetary Policy Committee has reduced the interest rate by 100 basis points, 12.5%, to stimulate aggregate demand, stimulate the economy. All other parameters uh, were left in place. The cash reserve ratio, the liquidity ratio, the asymmetric corridor. Joining me to discuss this is the CEO of Kauri Asset Management, Mr. Johnson Chuku. Uh, good afternoon to you, sir. Uh, please, your take. I mean, it looked like, I don't know what, what you initially thought the MPAC was going to do, so maybe you can give us your take, whether you thought they would raise rates, leave rates where they are, or cut them. Them, but the consensus for most economists was that they would leave everything where it was. Uh, what's your take on you know what you initially thought they would do and um, your reaction to the decision? Thank you, Rotus. Uh, my initial thought was that the MP MPs were going to keep all the benchmark rates, and that if it was going to adjust any rates, it was going to adjust the um, cash reserve ratio at 27.5%. It denies the banks the liquidity to lend. So by adjusting the monetary policy rate from 13.5 to 12.5%, as long as the banks don't have the liquidity to lend. That objective may not achieve it. Uh, the objective may not be achieved. Uh, so uh, my thought was that, given the uh, uptick in inflation rate, given the pressure on FX um, rate, that the monetary policies will not have to balance it with the need to stimulate the economy. And already they are using a lot of the finance initiatives to stimulate the economy by granting concessionary loans to several sectors of the economy. I felt with such concessionary loans, they may not have any compelling need to bring down the uh, monetary policy rate. But having done that, uh, the challenge I have now is that without the right liquidity, appropriate liquidity, the banks will still not be able to lend. The primary objective of bringing down the monetary policy rate is to ensure that you drive uh, credit into the um, into the system. But with a cash reserve ratio of 7.5 percent, where would the bank get the liquidity to lend? Uh, I think um, they, maybe they are, at the next meeting they have to consider uh, that uh, uh, tweaking with the cash reserve ratio. All right. Thank, thank you so much for that, Mr. Mr. Johnson. Okay, but what if I throw this at you? As for the reasons for them keeping that in place is to keep a check on liquidity. You, you mentioned foreign exchange pressure just a few seconds ago. So what about the argument that, well, the central bank, and we heard the, you know, the governor of the central bank speaking at length there, um, the, the, the having too much liquidity chasing after foreign exchange and the necessity in having to keep a check on that by keeping the cash reserve ratio at 27.5%. Yeah, that's the, those are, that, that's the exact contradiction. You have brought down the cash reserve ratio from 13.5 to 12.5. Uh, the primary objective of um, expansion and accommodative monetary policy is to ensure that you inject it into the economy. At the same time, you are holding back to the same point five where the bank's total deposits in cash reserve. What are they left with? Remember, they have to keep a 30% liquidity ratio. That if you add that, you're already at 57.5%. So and the, on the other, on the converse, they are supposed to maintain about 65% uh, deposit, loan to deposit ratio. So there's no way the banks will be able to achieve all these things at the same time. But if you take out, if you assume that the banks will keep the liquidity ratio of 30% and cash reserve ratio between 7.5%, that's 57.5%, then how would the bank be able to create the necessary credit? Remember that loans don't count as part of the liquidity assets of the banks. So that's the challenge you have. With the high cash reserve ratio, it would be difficult for the banks to um, to accede to the expectations of the central bank that the reduction in cash reserve rate and liquidity and um, monetary policy rates will lead to increase in um, credits in the system. Okay, but, okay, I, I, I take your argument, so I appreciate that. Okay, but what about this? Let me let me throw another uh, uh, um, another response to you. What about the loan to deposit ratio, the LDR? The central bank made you know you know they they made the announcement. They pushed uh, the banks to increase their loan to deposit ratio. We actually did see an increase in lending uh, to the tune of about over a trillion naira. Or so with, with regards to credit that was extended uh, to uh, to the economy. What would, would cannot that argument not be advanced in saying that, well, look, OK, we understand what you're saying about, you know, this particular argument with CRR needed to be reduced. But we already have our loan deposit ratio. We've pushed that out. The, the most of the banks have complied and we've seen more lending uh, or more funds going out to lend. So what about that argument? OK, you have to look at it from this perspective. The banks had to struggle to meet their uh, loan to deposit ratio. Remember that Central Bank was sterilizing any amount that was not lent. Um, the any bank that did not meet uh, the loan to deposit ratio, the differential was sterilized by the Central Bank. So the banks had a choice to say, okay, I keep this money with Central Bank at no benefit to me, or I lend it out. So I have to look for good credit customers to lend. 
And remember that once a bank has exist, exhausted their uh, loan to deposit ratio, unless their deposit expand further, they won't be in a position to create further credit. And the question you ask yourself, do we have an economy that is expanding? Of course, the central bank said there's some improvement in the increase in liquidity um, currency under circulation. But you are going to see a slowdown in economic activity. So you are not likely going to see a further in material increase in the deposits of the banks. If that does not happen, the banks have already masked, most of them have masked to their limits of credit. And they will not be able to lend further even when you bring down the, uh, uh, um, the cash reserve ratio. Uh, unless you bring down the cash reserve ratio, sorry. Uh, even when you bring down the monetary policy rates, uh, they won't have any incentive to lend just because you, you have brought down the monetary policy rate as long as they don't have an enhanced liquidity. And that will only happen if they're able to grow their deposit base or you reduce the cash reserve ratio so that you free up some of the liquidity that is currently stabilized in Central Bank. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, let me, let me, try, let me try again. Um, the governor of the Central Bank was asked about MPLs, non-performing loans, and he said MPLs have reduced from about 12% last year to 6% this year. So that's encouraging, seeing that the amount of non-performing loans have gone down. Is that, and this, I'm just throwing this out there, is that enough um, of an encouragement to now say, okay, we can keep um, the rates where they are, since there's no, at least the, the risk of MPLs has been coming down, as everyone is seeing. Yeah, you know, to see, we have to recognize one thing, that when an economy, yes, there have been an improvement, according to the center, I think from 10% to about 6%, 6.4% or thereabout. But the key thing is this, uh, we are now witnessing an economic slowdown, a very drastic economy. In fact, what happened at the economy, global economy is ground to a halt. And uh, what follows an economic slowdown, an economic recession, is say uh, an uptick in non-performing loans. So it is there's a possibility that the current trend we've seen of reducing uh, non-performing loans might reverse as economy slows and then borrowers find it difficult to meet their obligations to to lenders. We must not forget that uh, it has happened and will always happen anywhere in the world. When you have a slow economic activity, business are not able to generate cash flows. They are not able to generate profit, and then they find it difficult. If they're not generating cash, they find it difficult to make the applications to the banks. Of course, that's why the central bank came up, came up upfront to ask the banks to grant some level of forbearance to their credit customers. And the central bank said they will allow for accommodation of those forbearances. What that does that mean? That you're going to see weakened credit, but that may not be recognized as weakened credit. So the adjustment you saw in the uh, uh, non performing loan to stand loan. Maybe partly because the banks have granted some level of additional accommodation to their uh, delinquent uh, customers. Okay, thank you for that, sir. So while we're on the subject uh, of loans, um, just yesterday, the central bank sent out a tweet and a circular stating that they are, for their facilities, um, intervention facilities, the rates has been reduced from 9% to 5% for OFIs, other financial institutions. Uh, the central bank governor at this, uh, the meet outcome of this meeting was also talking about the, um, the number of um, uh, extensions of assistance to households and small businesses, banks, uh, I mean, uh, to restructure loans and restructure credit. Um, is this in a way, can this in a way cushion the possible difficulties that you see coming down the line with these measures that have been taken by the central bank? Yes, ideally, um, if you restructure uh, loans, uh, you, what you do is you grant the, the borrowers either extended payment terms or lower rates. Most, in most instances, what they are looking for is extended repayment uh, period. And uh, you, the, the amount they need to pay uh, at current time, we have to be reduced because they have an extension of the repayment period. So automatically, that gives you some leeway or uh, gives you some relief as your cash flow is closed down. So you may realize that even at a slower cash flow uh, or lower cash flow, you're able to see to your obligations to the banks. In some of the forbearances, you may see a situation whereby the, the central bank has actually granted some uh, period of uh, um, low repayment holidays. Uh, and if the banks have to extend that to their customers, it simply means some loans that you need to pay back this year, you may have to wait for one year, I mean, the additional moratorium of one year. You have to wait for under one year before you start making payments on those loans. So that such thing will give any borrower enough for you to restructure your balance sheet. And hopefully, if the recession or the slower economy is a temporary one, uh, by the time the moratorium would have expired, maybe your cash flow would have recovered. Certainly, uh, it's supposed to start a relief and also reduce, like I said earlier, some of the reduction in non-performing loans, loans may be a set of these restructuring and forbearances. 
if you have restructured a loan that uh, had become due for past 90 days and you give the person a monetary in one year, the loan returns to be a farming loan again and they can no longer be counted as part of the number of farming loans. Thank you for that answer, Mr. Johnson Chuko. I want you to please uh, hold hold on, take, hold with us. We want to play a, uh, a, a, a recording of what just occurred at the MPC meeting. Uh, here is uh, the Central Bank Governor, uh, Gordon Mefele, uh, speaking to the press and the public about the MPC's decision. In view of the foregoing, the committee decided by a unanimous vote to reduce monetary policy rate and to hold all other policy parameters constant. Seven members voted for a reduction of the monetary policy rate by 100 basis points, two members by 150 basis points, and one member by 200 basis points. In summary, the MPC voted to, one, reduce the MPR to 12.5%, two, retain the asymmetric core corridor of plus 200, and five, minus 500 basis points around the NPR. Three, retain the CRR at 22.5%, and four, retain the liquidity ratio at 30%. All right, that was the central bank governor, Mr. Godwin Mefele. Throwing us the curveball, uh, surprising us, uh, surprising the markets, with, uh, which generally thought that rates were going to stay where they are. We are speaking with Mr. Johnson Choko, the CEO of Kauri Asset Management, but we also want to bring in uh, Chika Mbono, a rise business a a analyst, who was with me about a couple hours ago discussing the outcome. Chika, you're welcome. Um, so, what do you, you know, what's your take on the on the reaction, on your reaction, that is, to the reduction in the benchmark interest rates? Uh, my brother Johnson uh, uh, has spoken, has said it all. The, the truth is that a lot of us expected um, uh, a hold. I do recall that each time the governor is faced with three decisions, whether to tighten, whether to hold, or whether to loosen. And he went through the, the dynamics of each scenario. At the end of the day, he said it was better to loosen. Remember, in the morning, I, I expressed that he's like in a catch-22 situation where Ordinarily, the basic economy tells us that it should ex loosen so that we can have can the economy, there will be more money in the system to grow the economy. But remember, he has his eye on inflation, he has his eye on exchange rate whenever he loses. And, but, but if it tightens us, it's going to be a problem for us. So that's why he has chosen to do what is done. But as my as, as Johnson has said, the truth is that the, the, the lending scenario in Nigeria has become very price inelastic very price inelastic. Uh, let me explain for that. It, it just says that interest rate does not encourage banks there is, you know, to lend. The theory of NPR says that it's a lead rate, lead rate in the economy, which means that if it's reduced, it means that deposit rates will be reduced and proportionately lending rates will be reduced. In that way, when, when the lending rates are reduced, people will be forced to, people will be encouraged to borrow. But borrow what, what, what money? What's the liquidity? You know, I did an exercise um, yesterday, which I shared with you this morning. And I said, I looked at the balance sheet of the top five banks in Nigeria at the cash reserve ratio in their balance sheets. As at March 31st, we have locked up in Central Bank more than 4.6 trillion, 4.6 trillion in, 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 in money, sterilized in CBN that the bank, the bank cannot assess. So CBN is on one hand encouraging banks to lend. On the other hand, through their back door, they're taking out all the money from the bank. So, you know, the most impactful thing, if they wanted to encourage lending, the most impactful thing, as Johnson already said, is to reduce the cash reserve ratio. That immediately we provide liquidity to the banks to enable them to, to lend. Thank you so much for that, uh, Chika. I appreciate that. Um, okay, Mr. Johnson, Chika, let, me, let me come back to you. Um, the last meeting uh, in January, uh, the rates, uh, the cash reserve ratio is where it is. This meeting now, this is where, this is where uh, the rates are still maintained at 27.5. Is there, at this point, I mean, I know the market is calling for it, you're calling for it, uh, Chika and Bon is calling for it. Is there any, do you see them possibly reducing it because or staying where things are right now at 27.5? Well, it depends on the, if they share our opinion. I mean, um, it, the primary objective, that the primary motive the central bank had for having a cash reserve of the 7.5% is to pull out of 
the liquidity pool, liquidity from the banks, so that the banks will not be able to, according to the central bank, uh, grant speculative, engaging speculative activities. Obviously, the attention is on FX. Um, but interestingly, the FX market, um, oh. I don't think, has been uh, uh, driven by speculative activities. Simple reason that we, we don't have a, a free, uh, uh, um, the FX market is not uh, liberalized. It's basically dependent on uh, documentations. You can't go to the Nigerian uh, FX market and buy dollar and transfer uh, anyhow. It must be backed by either you're opening a little of credit or, or you have a form A transaction. So uh, for many other official sources, so it, we talk about speculation in the FX market, I find it difficult to, to see how the banks will actually use uh, the liquidity to speculate in the FX market unless they are buying dollar denominated instruments. Uh, of course, the conversion process is also a very cumbersome process. But in any case, like you said, Ax, is it, do I expect that the central bank will eventually adjust the liquidity, the cash reserve ratio? It depends on if we share the opinions we are all expressing here. Um, but I think if you want to inject liquidity into the Nigerian banking system, if you want to encourage lending, not intervention from the central bank, I'm talking of commercial lending, you need to bring down cash reserve ratio. If you do not do that, you are not going to see the banks lend, expand their lending material. You may see an expansion in credit. The central bank is uh, providing on lending facilities of more than um, one, uh, 100 billion naira to the uh, pharmaceutical and medical industry. And I'm not one trillion naira. So that will be the banks will have as passed through to grant those loans. And you will see expansion in credit. But it's not coming from the coffers of the commercial banks, it's coming from the central bank. It's basically some level of development finance initiative coming from the quantitative easing of the central bank. And I, I, I think but if that if you want to encourage commercial lending from the commercial banks, you have to bring back down the cash reserve ratio and allow the banks to reflate. Oh. Yeah, liquidity provision. All right. Uh, CEO of Carry Asset Management, Mr. Johnson Chuko, and a RISE business analyst, Mr. Chikambo. And I want to thank you both very much for giving us your thoughts on the MPC decision there uh, to reduce at least the MPRA by 100 basis points and keep other parameters in check.